Hello everyone, uh, today we're going to be going over a problem in which we're going to solve for work for uh, a series of processes for a piston cylinder assembly. Now the problem that we're going to be solving reads as follows. We have a gas contained within a piston cylinder assembly that undergoes three processes in series. The process from state 1 to state 2 is a constant volume process from P1 is equal to 1 bar, V1 is equal to 4 cubic meters, to state 2 where P2 is equal to 2 bar. The second process, the process from state 2 to state 3, is a compression process to V3 is equal to 2 cubic meters, during which the pressure volume relationship is PV is equal to a constant. Now the final process, process from state 3 to state 4, is a constant pressure process to state 4, where V4 is equal to 1 cubic meter. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and written down all of the knowns for each of the processes in which we're going to be solving for work. So the problem in itself asks us to sketch the processes in series on a PV coordinate system and evaluate the work, in, uh, and evaluate the work for each process in kilojoules. Now uh, we'll go ahead and sketch the uh, PV diagram for our series of processes at the very end. So the first thing that we're going to do, however, is we're going to solve for uh, the work for each process in kilojoules. So. Initially, what we're going to do is we're just going to start off with process from state 1 to state 2, and we're going to calculate the amount of work for this process. So let's first go ahead and write down our definition of work for an expansion or compression process, which is work from state 1 to state 2 is equal to the integral from state 1 to state 2 of P dV. Now, uh, when I was reading the problem statement, I stated that the process from state 1 to state 2 is a constant volume process, which tells us that V1 is equal to V2. And therefore, for this process, the volume is completely unchanging. And as a result, if we look at our integral, the differential of our volume is going to be 0 because we have no change in volume. And as a result, we have work is equal to 0. So without a, without a change in volume, we have no work. So, so far, so easy. Now let's go ahead and move on to our second process, our process from state 2 to state 3. Okay, so if you go ahead and look back at our knowns for our problem, the problem told us that throughout this, the, throughout this compression process, the pressure-volume relationship abided by PV is equal to a constant. And I'm just going to denote the constant as some constant C for the sake of simplicity. Now, if we go ahead and solve this relationship for pressure, we can see that pressure is equal to our constant C divided by volume. And therefore, pressure is inversely proportional to volume for this particular process. So we know how process changes as a function of volume, so let's go ahead and write down our expression for work for our compression process going from state 2 to state 3. So the work from state 2 to state 3 is equal to the integral from state 2 to state 3 of P dV. Now we know how pressure changes as a function of volume and therefore, we can take this relationship here and plug that into our definition of work. So in doing so, we get the integral from 2 to 3 of C dV divided by V. Our constant can come outside the integral, so we get C times the integral from state 2 to state 3 dV divided by V. Now this is a very easy to integral to solve, and what we can say is that the constant C times the natural log of V3 minus the natural log of V2. <coughs> now we do have a, a nice identity in natural logs that we can use to rewrite this expression in a simpler form. So, that, uh, so we can rewrite our result as C times the natural log 
of v3 divided by v2. So we have our expression for how work, uh, we have uh, our expression for work between states 2 and 3, but we still have this pesky little constant c hanging out in front of our relationship. Now, remember that we've already said that PV is equal to some constant C for this particular process. And as a result of this, we can also say that P2V2 is equal to this constant, and same with P3V3. So, by multiplying pressure and volume for either state 2 or state 3, we will get the same constant C. So what we can do is we can utilize this relationship that we just wrote down, plug that into our expression for work for our constant C, and then we'll get our relationship for work for going from state 2 to state 3 via our compression process. So work from 2 to 3 can be written as P2V2 times the natural log of V3 divided by V2 or we can also solve it using pressure times volume at state 3. P3, V3, times the natural log of V3 divided by V2. So we can solve it either way, and regardless, we will always obtain, we will obtain the same result, whether we use P times V for state 2 or for state 3 in solving for our work, uh, our, uh, work from state 2 to state 3. We'll still get the same response. Okay, so since I know that <laughs> a little bit later on we will have to solve for P3, I'm going to go ahead and use um, work is equal to P3 V3 times the natural log of V3 divided by V2 to calculate our work for this process from state 2 to state 3. So in how we do that is actually just going back to the relationship that we were just talking about where we have PV is equal to some constant C. So we know that P2 v2 is equal to our constant c, which is equal to p3, v3. Now, in the knowns that we've already written down for our problem, we know p2, we know v2, and we also know v3. The only thing that we do not know is p3. So we can actually just go ahead and solve this expression for p3 and use it to solve for our pressure at state 3. So let me just write down this as a step 3. So we have p3 is just going to be our pressure times a ratio over volumes V2 divided by V3. So if we go ahead and plug in our values for pressure and volume, which we have is so, then we see that our pressure is going to be 400,000 Pascal. Awesome. So now we have, we found uh, our pressure at state 3. We also know our volume at state 3. So now we can go ahead and solve for our work for our process going from state 2 to state 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So step 4, work from state 2 to state 3 is equal to P3 V3 times the natural log of V3 divided by V2. Now let's go ahead and just plug in our, our values, our known values. So we've got our 400,000 Pascal. We know our volume. It's going to be 2 cubic meters. And then we have our ratio of our volumes. As such. So, with this being the case, plugging this uh, all all of this expression into our calculator or MATLAB or something like that, we know that our work from state two to state three is minus five hundred and fifty four thousand five hundred and eighteen joules. We can rewrite this in terms of kilojoules, 
so our work for state from state 2 to state 3 is minus 554.5 kilojoules. And that is our answer for our compression process from state 2 to state 3. Now, um, one thing that I do want to uh, make mention of is we have this negative sign in front of our uh, in front of our value for work. So what is this actually telling us? What does this negative sign mean? And what it's actually telling us is whether or not our system is having work done to it or if our system is doing the work. Now the the, the generalized engineering the uh, generalized engineering convention for work is that if your system is doing work, then your work is positive. Now in this case, we have negative work, which means that we have work being done to our system. And this makes perfect sense because from our, uh, if we remember our process, it's a compression process in which our piston is pushing on the gas within our cylinder. The control surface that we're setting up would be around our gas. And therefore, since the piston is pushing down on the gas within our cylinder, work is being done onto our gas and therefore our system. So the negative sign here is a perfect indication that A, we solved the problem correctly, that's always a good thing, and that the physics are correct. So we know that our system is having work done to it during this, compr uh, during this compression process. So that's a, another nice uh, sanity check, if you will. <laughs> so we have negative, so we have 554.5 kilojoules of work being done to our system between states two and three. Now the final thing that we have is our process number three, which is taking us from state three, oh, process from state three to state four. Now in the problem statement, it told us that we have a constant pressure process from state three to state four which means that solving for work for this particular process is actually going to be really, really easy. So we have work from state 3 to state 4 is equal to the integral from state 3 to state 4 of PDV. Now we've already said that it's a constant pressure process, which means that we can bring the pressure term outside of our integral. So we get pressure times the integral from states 3 to state 4 of dV. And therefore, we just have pressure times <coughs> the difference in our state 4 and our state 3 volumes. And that's how we can solve for work from state 3 to state 4. So we've already solved for our uh, work, or I'm sorry, our pressure at state 3. And therefore we also know the pressure at state 4 because we have a constant pressure process. Now, uh, let me just explicitly write this here. So P3 is equal to P4, which is equal to some constant pressure P between our two states, state 3 and state 4. So we know pressure P. We also know the volume at state 4, and we also know the, the volume at state 3. So we know everything, and we can just go ahead and solve for our work between states 3 and 4. So let's go ahead and just write down everything that we know. So we've got our 400 Pascal. And we also have our volumes at state 4 and state 3. So this tells us that the work from, uh, the work from state 3 to state 4 is minus 400,000 joules. And we can rewrite this in terms of kilojoules. So we've got work from state 3 to state 4 is minus 400 kilojoules. So here's our final response for the third process. And again we see that little the uh, the negative sign in front of our work which again tells us that from uh, the during the process from state 3 to state 4 work is being done to our system. Okay, so we have the work for all three of our processes solved for. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and draw out this, this series of processes on a PV diagram. So let's go ahead and draw 
a little figure here. So where I'm going to put pressure in terms of bar. So just remember one bar is the equivalent of 100,000 Pascal. And I'm going to put volume here in cubic meters. So we have one, two, three, and four. One, oh, that did not write very well. One, two, three, and four. So we know at our initial state, so state one, we were originally at a volume of four cubic meters, and we were at one bar, which puts our initial state right here. So this is our state number one. So state one. Then we undergo a constant volume process in which we increase the pressure to two bar. So our state two is right here. Now this little arrow that I have here just indicates the direction in which we're going from one state to another. So we're going from state one to state two. From state two to state three, however, we undergo a compression process which abides by the pressure volume relationship PV is equal to a constant. And during this, we not only decrease our volume, but we also increase the pressure. So we have increased our pressure to four bar, and we've decreased our volume to two cubic meters. So this is our state three. And then we know that we undergo some sort of a process in which pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. So it kind of has like a nice little curve to it. And then finally, we undergo a constant pressure process in which we decrease the volume and maintain constant pressure. And here, we have our final state that's at four bar and one cubic meter. So here is actually our full, um, full series of processes uh, for our given problem. Now one thing I'd like to note is that we do have a series of processes, however this is not a cycle. In order for this to, in order for it to be a cycle, in order for a series of processes to be a cycle, you have to begin and end at the same state. Now here, we, we haven't gone back from state 4 to state 1. <laughs> And with that being the case, we just have a series of processes, and therefore this cannot possibly be a cycle. It's just a series of processes that start at state one and ends at state four. Okay, I just wanted to, to, to make that clear. So we've gone ahead and we've already, we've drawn our PV diagram, and we've also uh, found, um, we've also found work for each of our three processes. So uh, hopefully you found this video to be um, helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or anything that regarding the problem that we solved or any of the steps, feel free to leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer your question as soon as I can. Uh, again, thank you for, for watching and I will see you next time.